What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have going for you, ladies and gentlemen. The Atlantic is about to get very active, ladies and gentlemen. We have three areas of interest that we need to talk about. One of them is an immediate threat to land in the Gulf of Mexico. One of them is this area of interest right here, this tropical wave that is organizing and developing by the hour. And the other one is this one over here that is continuing to organize. It actually, looks very impressive on satellite. If we go ahead and show you infrared, it looks even more impressive on infrared right here. So that's the situation we are pretty much playing with right here. So here's the situation. We're going to go ahead and start with the Gulf of Mexico wave and give you an idea of what's going on. 20% chance of formation in the next seven days. Broad area of low pressure could form in the central or western Gulf of Mexico by the beginning of next week. Some slow development is possible thereafter after it moves westward and approaches the western Gulf coastline. 20% chance once again. This one, though, has been pretty interesting. It's been ramping up in its chances. We are now at a 50% chance of formation in the next seven days, 30% in the next 48 hours. I believe yesterday we were at like 20% when we were talking about this, so now it's at 50. So things are really starting to get a pretty interesting over here. Disorganized showers and thunderstorms located over the central tropical Atlantic are associated with an elongated trough of low pressure 750 miles south-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. Environmental conditions appear conducive for gradual development as the system moves generally west-northwest at 10 miles per hour over the central tropical Atlantic, 50% in the next seven days, 30 in the next 48 hours. Similar with this thing, 30% in the next 48 hours, 40% in the next seven days. So that's the situation we have going on right here. So this is something we absolutely need to monitor as at the Atlantic hurricane season is starting to get very, very active for you, ladies and gentlemen. So here's what we have going on going forward right here. We're going to go ahead and show you some model runs to kind of give you an idea of what's going on, what the aggregate's thinking. We're going to go ahead and first show you the European run right here, the European operational. And the European operational have both these tropical waves kind of trying to organize, meander, and develop. There have been some runs of a potential Fujiwara effect in the past right here, which I found pretty interesting between these two waves that are right here, which if that were to happen, I would it would be definitely a show to take a look at. However, th this thing continues to organize, develop, and the Europeans calling for a strong tropical storm by 10 days out, around 1,001 millibars, 60 mile per hour winds. So things are getting pretty interesting as time continues to go on. As for this Gulf thing, the Europeans a bit more of a northward bias when it comes to this, as it hugging the coast of Florida, Alabama, Mississippi before entering Louisiana, causing some flooding and dissipating after that. So that's what the Europeans calling for, at least for now. The operate uh, the ensemble shows something different. Next thing we're showing you is the GFS at the zero Z to kind of give you an idea a reference to this. This GFS right here. It has both of these systems organizing. It actually has this one right here strengthening up into a hurricane by three days out, which I got to say, that's a bit outlandish right there because this thing's still at a 50% chance of formation in the next seven days. Yes, it is organizing at a decently quick pace, but I don't think it's organizing that much to really ramp up in intensity and rapidly intensify the way it's going. But we'll have to wait and see when it comes to that. The GFS continues to have this strength and gets up to a Category 2 hurricane by the time it approaches that Azores high and gets pushed up and stays out to sea right there. So that's what we have going on. The GFS is also picking up on something else. It's picking up on another tropical wave that's moving over the coast of Cuba, and then potentially towards Florida as we get to 12 days out. Keep in mind, this is pretty highly unpredictable, but we have seen several runs of GFS pretty much looking at this. The GFS at the 0Z run also then has it moving par uh, parallel to the West Florida coast, strengthening down to a 935 millibar, potentially Category 4 hurricane before impacting Mississippi. Keep in mind, this is... Very, very, very unlikely to happen at this time. Number one, we're almost 15 days out, so this is pretty much fantasy land from the GFS, so I'm taking that with a massive grain of salt. And number two, it does have the conditions to really ramp up in intensity if that does happen, but for now, the, the steering pattern is a bit off. I've never seen a hurricane miss Florida, hug the west coast of Florida, and then make a landfall in Louisiana or Mississippi at such a close angle to that. So that's something I'm continuing to monitor right there, but we'll 
keep an eye on it. We'll show you the CMC run next and give you an idea of what's going on. The CMC run, as you can see, we have these systems organizing and developing in the main development region. And the CMC actually has something; these two weakening pretty uh, pretty quickly, but then it has another wave coming off, the strengthening down to a hurricane. It also has this tropical wave over the over the Gulf of Mexico, rapidly organizing and intensifying until it gets to the until it gets to the Texas Mexico area. It makes landfalls around a thousand four millibar tropical storm. But every model is different so far. First thing we're showing you to work what's working for all these is the massive global sea temperatures we have. We have insane global sea temperatures of 28 plus degrees Celsius or 82 plus degree Fahrenheit temperatures from Texas all the way to Africa. So there is more than enough warm water for these systems to really develop. And there's also more than enough ocean heat content for these things to develop in the main development region as these systems get close to land and in this Gulf scenario right here. I will say this. I'm paying attention to this eddy of insane ocean heat content over here. The reason I'm paying attention to it is because let's say this tropical wave develops east and further east than we anticipate and starts organizing. It's going to go through the loop current, but let's say it enters this warm eddy right here. It'll have more than enough energy for explosive intensification, and this is a similar eddy to that of her, what Hurricane Ida used in 2021. So this is something I'm paying attention to primarily because the OHC is pretty much nuclear fuel that's going into this if this does develop and it does start to take advantage of these waters. And what's also working for is the wind shear. By the time the system gets over there, there's not going to be very much wind shear. There's going to be some inflow and outflow by the time it gets over there. But overall, it's not going to be that bad compared to what I've seen before. So that's what I'm also paying attention to. The wind shear is not, th uh, not that bad for development. It's actually really good for development. And the mo there's also enough moist air for this thing to develop. We'll go ahead and show you that right here. Here's the moisture component by the time it gets pretty much gets to that area around 108 hours out. There is like there is some dry air there, but by the time this wave moves over, there is moderately moist air according to the European for this thing to really get going. So something to monitor for sure, but for now we'll have to wait and see. We're going to go ahead and show you the European ensembles to kind of give you an idea of what's going on with all this stuff. The European ensemble actually has a wave breaking off this western wave over here and potentially heading towards the Lesser Antilles as a tropical storm or hurricane before impacting Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and then moving out to sea right here. However, I'm also looking at the European Zero Z Ensemble, and the Ensemble runs really are showing something pretty interesting. They're showing tropical storm to Category 1 hurricane scenarios, potentially hitting Texas just south of Houston over here. So that's what's raising alarm bells for me right there, especially considering how close that is. This only starts developing, like what? We only start seeing scenarios like what? 102 hours out, this is going to be by the Bahamas, then develops potentially just off the coast of Florida and then moves over there. So that's what I'm paying attention to. And I'm also going to show you the 6Z to kind of give you a better understanding. It's also showing some signs of organization, although they are a bit weaker than the European uh, Zero Z around um, tropical storm strength, but this is still over water, has plenty of time to organize and develop, so this is a situation we're going to have to monitor for the next several days. Also, shout out to Weather Center Nazario. He's been helping me out behind the scenes with this stuff. I'll leave a link to his channel down in the description down below. Please go subscribe to him. Let's see if we can get him to 100 subs. But with that being said, we're closing the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather but with that being said have a wonderful day guys stay safe